Good morning, children, and happy Sunday to us all. We thank God for this blessed day for bringing us together to learn at His feet. Before we do anything, we want to pray to thank Him for all His protection. Eyes closed, hands together. Jesus, we thank you for everything. We thank you for today. We thank you for looking after us. We thank you for all that you've done for us throughout the week. We thank you for providing for our needs, for giving us clothes to wear, for providing for our parents. Jesus, come and save our soul. Teach us your word. Write it in our heart. Help us to do it. We want to be you. We want to be yours. Hear our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to listen to a keyboard playing from one of us. Excellent. God bless you, new team. That was a wonderful playing. Our memory verse says, The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. Psalm 34 verse 7. The title of our lesson says, God takes care of Elisha. Our Bible reading is taken from 2 Kings 6, 8-23. And we're not going to read all those verses, but our selected verses are 8, 9, 11, 15, and 16. Second King 6, verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. Verse 9. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place. For three that the Syrians are come down. Verse 11. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host composed, compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servants said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Verse 16, And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. This lesson is telling us about a king of Syria, king of Israel, plus Elisha the prophet. At this time, king of Syria loved the land of Israel and wanted to capture that sit that land and he now made plan to attack the children of Israel and while he was doing all these things God knew everything that he was doing God had him God knew his heart he didn't know that there is a God in that land of Israel that he was to capture is as he was doing these plans he's been doing this many times and as he was going about with this wicked plan God spoke to Elisha the prophet to tell him all the plans of the king of Syria and to go and warn the king of Israel Elijah did that 
Then the king of Syria noticed that every time he's trying to attack them, he could see that they seemed to know his plans. He wasn't happy. He said, ah, how come they know all his tricks and his plans? Somebody must be telling them all that he is planning to do. Who could that be? Who could that be? He now called all his servants. He was up. He was really sad. As you can see in the, in the picture. He was really sad, upset. Called all his servants. Asking. And one of the servants said, Oh, that it could, it might be Elijah, the prophet. And the king's, king of Syria said, Really? Okay. What I'm going to do now is we're going to go and capture that prophet. You can see. He just, he just forgot that God is the one at work. It wasn't the prophet. See, this is just to tell you that whatever anyone is planning against you, behind you, at your back, God sees everything. And God will fight for you and give you total, complete victory. King of Syria now said, okay, I'm, go I I'm going to send some soldiers to, he asks where this, where Elisha dwells, where he stays. And he lives in Dalton. He sent the soldiers with so many chariots, so many soldiers just to, to get one man, just, just for Elisha. Look at that picture. Look at how many, how many horses, how many soldiers going to just get one man. Hmm? See? Okay. Then, in the morning, when Elijah's servant woke up, went outside, saw all these massive soldiers gathered around their area, took, ah, wondered. What is going on? He just couldn't believe it. Went back to Elijah, asking, Wow, there's something outside there. So many soldiers, what's going on? He was afraid, scared. But Elisha assured him, tell, he told him not to fear. But then, Elijah, Elisha now made him to see that our God, the God of Israel, is more than any other God. God Elisha prayed that God should open the eyes of his servants. And when God opened his eyes, what did he see? As you can see in the picture, so many chariots in heaven, all surrounding Elisha. Amazing, isn't it? So also, God surrounds us. Everywhere we go, even at home, while we're sleeping, God surrounds us all the time. He never leaves us as he has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will be with us. He will stand by us. He will be everything to us. That is God. That is our God that we serve. And that is the God of Israel. Elisha now told God, because... Elisha doesn't want those soldiers to be killed. He prayed that God should make them not to see. And when God did that, Elisha now went out. Because you know one thing, they don't even know who Elisha was. All they know was that they want to go and capture Elisha. That's all they know. So Elisha went out to meet them. They are blind already. They couldn't see. So Elijah now took them gently, take them back to the king of Samaria. These Samarians were their enemy. They are enemies. They are not friends. And when they saw them, wow, it was like, now they are here. Our enemy are here. Let's kill them. But you know what? Our God doesn't like people killing each other. Our God loves peace. 
He wants us to love each other. Yeah. So, Elisha said, no, you are not to lay any hand on them. All I want you to do is give them water and food to drink and take care of them. That's it. And let them go. This is what Elisha did. Loving the Father is loving the Son. Loving Holy Spirit, that's how the kingdom is won. You can see the love of God. God loves us so much, so dearly. He doesn't want any soul to perish. He doesn't want anyone to miss heaven. He wants us to be at peace with each other. When we are at peace with each other, we can help each other. We can talk to each other about God. And God cannot um, save souls of our friends, of even everyone that we speak to. God can come into the heart and speak to them. So this is going to be our lesson. Always remember, I will show statement. the love of God to others. For ages 2 to 5. Read the New Testament verses below. Underline each part that tells how God wants us to treat people who are not good to us. And for ages 6 to 8. Draw a line to match the person to the words he spoke. Be sure to keep it in the correct order of the story. The next lesson is Lesson 11a titled, A Big Change. May God bless us all. See you next week. Good morning children and welcome to Sunday School. Happy Sunday to you all. For today's answer class lesson, we are going to look into the title called Changed. Our Bible text is going to be taken from Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 8, 1 John chapter 1 verses 9. I'm going to read from our Bible text. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace, in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. We thank God for God's word. So children, as you all know from the previous lesson, we learned about conviction which is the feeling of being sorry and acknowledging your sin and truly repenting, confessing your sins to God, and that leads to salvation. And you know salvation, salvation it is the gift of God's grace through which we receive for forgiveness of sin. Yeah? So in our Bible text, we read about quickened. Do you know what quickened mean? It means to restore to life. Those who are not saved are spiritually dead and salvation brings spiritual life. So children, we need to repent from our sins, confessing our sins. All was paid on Mount Calvary 
through the shedding of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So children, in 1 John chapter 1 verses 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So if we confess, the Lord is there to forgive us all of our sins. We need to endure till to the end. He says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. So we need to pray to God that the devil will not come into our lives. We need to flee away from the devil. So children, today is the day of salvation. We need to take advantage of God's salvation today. So we need to pray today that God's salvation will come into our hearts so that we will reign with our God eternally and our names are written in the book of life. So children, let's take advantage of God's salvation and may God bless you all. Activity, match the questions to the correct word. Next lesson is lesson 97, titled The Second Step. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for today's Sunday School. We'd like to thank you for your love. We'd like to thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, to die for us on Mount Calvary, that whosoever believeth in you should not perish, but have everlasting life. Father Lord, come down today. Come and save us. Come and sanctify us. Come and baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Father Lord, we want our names to be written in the book of life. Father Lord, we pray that you come into our hearts. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, children. Bye.